And when somebody is verbally abusive to you, you cling to that goodness. You know, when you see those glimpses of good, I think you cling to it not only because it reminds you that there's a good person in there, because then you also don't have to face the fact that maybe I didn't make the best decision here. And sometimes it's hard to reconcile that in yourself as well. And every woman thinks they're going to change that guy. That was, and that was a big part of it. The first time, the big moment, well, first of all, when we were on our honeymoon, we got in a fight and he slept on the couch. That's never a good sign, one night. Mm -hmm. And then about two months after we got married, he came home and was, he'd had too much to drink and he was screaming at me and he threw his ring at me and said he never wanted to see me again. And the, the verbal assaults were just, here's this person that's supposed to love you more than anything, and you're being attacked in a way you've never been attacked before. And, and initially, you're so stunned, you don't know how to react to it. So first you plead, what's wrong? What do you mean? Yes, I love you. And he said something that struck me. He said, you're just like the rest of them. And that indicated to me that this was not about me. This was about him. And eventually, because you love them, I did the whole... I can fix this. Mm -hmm. I can prove to him that love, you know, lasts and I'm not going to leave and and that becomes part of your motivation. At what point did you realize he was an alcoholic and once you did, were you still trying to fix that? Yeah, I mean, I didn't it, it was 2 years in. I called his parents and said I'm ready to go. I can't do it anymore. And it, that's a moment where you realize you don't have control and mm -hmm. that's what's so frightening. I couldn't make him less angry. I couldn't make him stop lying. I couldn't make him drink less. He had to be able to do that. And it feels like such a losing battle. And that's when hopelessness really sets in. Because you just feel like there's nothing you can do. But again, I was still married to him and he stepped up. We went to counseling together. It got better for a year. What your husband did was absolutely ex-husband inexcusable. There's no, there's no, I mean, but I can't understand why somebody didn't. I'm, I'm angry with the doctors that were dealing with you guys that nobody treated his alcohol. That well, poor guy never got treatment for his alcohol. This is all I, I alcoholism. He, he was abusive when he was drinking. Yes. He was not, he was a different person when he drank. This is classic alcoholism and classic codependency, you'll permit me. Very, oh, and, absolutely. And, I own that, and yeah. no Al-Anon, no AA. I, nothing gets better. It's, counseling does not treat these things. Mm -hmm. it, it ends and helps you get out of the relationship, which it did. Which it and, did for me. It yeah. did for me because, as I said, you know, eventually you realize you can't fix this. And in, in the end, he, part of the big reason I left, we had this catalyst. It was a $200 bar bill and he was saying, no, I wasn't drinking. Well, I, I, what was telling to me was I gave him three chances to come clean with me. This is what I did. And it, at that point, I think when you're in it, because you're being told your horrible names and you're selfish and you're this and that, that worthlessness does start to really settle into your bones. The and then what makes it worse mm -hmm. is that you don't leave. And I didn't leave because I was married. I didn't think I had a choice. And every time it happened, that just compounded the worthlessness because you think, I am a smart woman. I can take care of myself. Why am I doing this? HLN asked the attorney for Christie's former husband for a response. They have no comment. Christie, she's here with us now. And Christie, what message would you have for women out there that may be caught in this cycle of domestic violence? Well, I think it's really important that people recognize that it's not okay. And when you're in it, it's hard for you to separate yourself from the it's not you know on an innate, innate level that it's not okay but you start to convince yourself maybe I'm perpetuating it maybe I did something before in my life and now I'm getting what I deserve because you're so used to hearing you know words that are are so hateful towards you from somebody that is supposed to love you but the the bat the whole crux of this is it's not okay what happened to you but it's not okay that you let it destroy you either and that much I finally learned and it's really hard for women that are caught in this to sort of hit bottom. It's almost easier to be hit bottom with a drug because you, you get so caught up in feeling responsible for this. And as often as the mm -hmm. case, women take responsibility for this, or they may have had relationships earlier in their life that confirm this sort of same sense of how a relationship is supposed to go. How, how do we rake people from that slumber that this isn't going to get better? Well... I, I think you know on some level after you've, I knew I had exhausted all my resources to fix it. We had been to counseling. I had, got, I had gotten help from his parents. I had tried it on my own. I, I had done everything I could do. It was out of my control at that point. And when you finally recognize, look, I'm with somebody who may have very good traits, but at the end of the day, if they can't deal with you, if they're not healthy enough to deal 
with conflict in a respectful and dignified way, they're just not healthy enough to be in your life. Let's take and some I finally realized I was walking around like a zombie, Dr. Drew. Oh, I was I walking imagine. around not letting myself feel anything. And yeah. something in me just said, this is not what you are meant for.